Todd Serling. You're listening to The Zero Hour. Rest your eyes. Exercise your imagination. Today, Kim Weiss caught a sidelong glance at a small town entanglement. Mind of the Beholder. Starring Lyle Wagner. In a mutual broadcasting system presentation of... The Zero Hour. Brought to you by the Ford Motor Company. Beach Nut Chewing Tobacco, Shenley Industries, Matus Wine, and Kodak. This is The Zero Hour on Mutual Radio. Mr. Know-it-all here, the man who knows everything about everything. When it's 4 a.m. in Philadelphia, what time is it in Rome? Uh, 4 a.m. That's Rome, New York, of course. Uh, hello, Mr. Know-it-all. How long is the Orinoco River? It dried up six days ago. Oh, then how long has the dried up Orinoco River been? 18 miles, without the headboard. Hello, Mr. Know-it-all. Now, what is the weight of the Eiffel Tower? In tourist season, about 20 minutes. Hello, Mr. Know-it-all. What station wagon outsells all other wagons, big or small? Uh, uh... The Pinto wagon. I didn't know that. And when it comes to resale value, based on a national average of NADA prices, both one- and two-year-old Pintos return more of their original sticker prices than Vega or VW. You know, I didn't know that either. Well, now that you know, stop in at your local Ford dealer. Over the last five years, Ford dealers have sold more small cars, cars with wheelbases of less than 112 inches, than any other single group of dealers in America. Come see your local Ford dealer. He's small car headquarters. Hello, Mr. Uh, know a few things. You can't go home again, is a well-worn phrase, but apt nonetheless. Ellen White had left her hometown several years ago to seek fame and fortune, and now she returns to find her own town has turned against her. Why should this be? All she's done is change her name and become a movie star. Now she's called Bernadette Blue. Our story is called Mind of the Beholder. Are we going to let these immoral smut peddlers find a home in Middle Point? No! We're all regular, clean-minded folks with kids to raise. And we don't want no dirty moving pictures, do we? No! Just because she grew up here doesn't mean that Bernadette Blue is still welcome. Am I right? Sheriff Peters, you've got to do something or we're going to have a riot on our hands. Now, don't worry, Smiley. I'm here to protect the people even if it's only from themselves. Well, can't you do something about this sensible fella? Everything was fine till he come to town picking up a fuss about what I show in my movie house. Now, now folks is all riled up looking for a fight. There ain't going to be no fight as long as I'm sheriff, I can tell you that. I say when she gets here, we run her right out of town. We don't want her or her kind. That'll be enough of that. That'll be enough of that. All right, hold it down. That's all quiet, everybody. This meeting's over. You can't take the law into your own hands. Then, Sheriff, do your job. That's what I am doing. Mr. Sensible, you've got an illegal rally going on here. Now, either you break it up or you're going to jail. You can't do that. Folks, go on home. We can't act like vigilantes just because somebody you may not like comes to town. If you want to have a meeting, have one. But not on the streets. That's what town hall is for. Now, come morning, you can have your meeting. Here they are. There they are. Everyone. Hey, you! Oh, it's so good to be home. Clear the way. Clear the way. Miss Blue, get in the Let me through here. Sure. I'm Manny Tucker. Well, get in the wagon. Go home, everyone. Thank you all for coming. Well, what about the limousine? I'll be sure you will Well, Manny, what do you think of my hometown? I think we're crazy to come here if you really want to know. <clears throat> I'm uh, Sheriff Peters. Uh, oh, folks were a little excited back there. <laughs> we weren't used to having celebrities in Middle Point. Yeah. Well, if I'd known there was going to be a lynch mob, I'd have brought along a camera crew. Well, you <laughs> would take that, Manny. You'll be staying at the hotel, I take it. No, no. We're planning on staying with my folks. Oh, well, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Whitehead are out of town just now. They I... are? But they knew I was coming. I wrote to them. Well, they, they thought it might be best to take a short vacation, and uh, oh. that's why... They... They're ashamed of me. No, no, no. Not ashamed, exactly. No matter. I still have my house key. Go ahead, Manny. Offer. 
Are you putting me on? No. Well, I guess that's it. Your luggage's on the porch. Uh, what's this? Oh, don't tell me you've never seen a $20 bill. Keep it. For what? Oh, don't force a man. Well, I give it to him. No, 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 I can't take that. People might get the wrong idea. Well, I'm going inside. Hurry! He's such a rich man. He's the worst cheapskate I've ever seen. The chauffeur makes more than some of the actors. Well, Miss Blue, I, I hope you enjoy your stay in Middle Point. I'd best be getting on back wait, now. Wait, I... wait. Uh, aren't you Al Peters? Didn't you have a kid brother, Paul? We went to high school together. I, um, uh, I was little Ellen Whitehead then. You look a little like Paul. Yeah, uh, Paul's dead. Uh, he got killed overseas. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here, take it. If I have to put it in your pocket, I will. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll take it. Good. I'm glad. Um, we'll be coming to town tomorrow to see the sights. Manny has to meet with a picture show man anyway. Maybe um, I'll drop in and see you? Well, I... I'll uh, do it first thing. Night, Sheriff. Uh... Yeah? Uh, you, you mind if I ask you something kind of personal? Oh, feel free. Well, all of those things you do in your movies... Uh, well, you, you don't really... I, I, I mean, uh, it's fake, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> no, Sheriff. It's real. Every frame. Oh. Uh, good night. Uh, yeah. Uh, good night. is a rosé wine imported from the old world to go with everything good. It has a light, easy-to-like taste, so it makes good food even better. Good people, friendlier. And good times? Well, just try some and see. Try some and you'll see. Imported by Dreyfus Ashby & Company, New York, New York. To be any kind of wine you want it to be. Hey, 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 Matus Rosé. Salacious pornography. Or uh what? Let's welcome Ms. Constance Fiddler. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to be here. Now, it's good to be here. When Mr. Sensabaugh contacted my organization, I knew I had to come here to your town to raise the real issue that's at stake in this onslaught of degeneracy and breakdown of our basic moral fiber. Now that, of course, is a blatant and utter exploitation of women in these films. The men who make these movies cater exclusively to other men. Men's fantasies, men's ideas of women's fantasies. And it is these men, in pursuit of the almighty dollar, who perpetuate the attitude in this society that women are merely toys to be played with. It is my firm belief that if women throughout the country would take a united stand... Uh, I think you're missing the point here. I'm not finished. Yes, you are. Just who do you think you are? Uh, please, do this my way. Look at your audience. They don't know what you're talking about. You've got to speak their language. What? Talk about laundry detergent and rug cleaners? Please, trust me. Well, you invited me. Let me say what I have to say. These people are like children. If you don't say what they want to hear, they'll tune you out. Look, I'm on your side. Oh, the hell you are. You're as bad as the others. Why don't you wake up? Ladies, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we seem to be having a bit of a misunderstanding. Come on. we should right now. Uh, feelings are running a little high. Oh, it's about me, isn't it? Well, yes. Does everyone in town feel the same way about me, about what I do? Well, I, I can't speak for everybody. How do you feel? Who, me? Oh, uh, I don't know. 
Seemed like a nice enough gal. You sure are pretty, I can tell you that. Well, that's not what I mean. I don't know what I mean. I, I just feel like a freak, that's all. Now, hold on a minute. I went to Hollywood to be in the movies. I, I always wanted that. You know, to be an actress. Well, now I am. I don't make that much money, but it's a lot more than I was making being a waitress. Now, you don't have to explain. But I want to. All right. Well, it all started one night when a girlfriend of mine introduced me to me. Have a seat, Mr. Tucker. I thought maybe you'd have a bed in your office. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're all business here. <laughs> hey, you got a pretty full house downstairs for matinee. Oh, yeah, it's like that all the time. Mill rats, you know. Most everybody around here works the trees one way or another, oh. day and night. So I schedule my starting times according to when the shifts change. Hey, that's smart. Uh, that's business. <laughs> right. That's the name of the game. We were just about going under till you came along. You know, the other theater in town was getting all the big movies. Got some deal going with the distributor. Distribution. That's the name of the game. Uh -huh. I make them. I know the market. Which theaters to book and ship out the prints. Yeah. <laughs> you show them. People come. We make money. Everyone's happy, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. At least everybody was till that sensible fellow blew into town. He, he don't like us too much. Sensible? Well, P.S. for him. Pardon? Tough sledding. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I get it, I get it. Hey, you know, Smiley, I, I think the two of us are going to have a long and prosperous association. <laughs> Shoot, I got ten more triple X features in the works right now. No. I got girls coming to me banging to break in the movies. Yeah? Yeah, you heard of the casting couch, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> I may have to rent me a warehouse full of couches. <laughs> uh, no refund. <laughs> it's me, your star, the granny in the head. <laughs> oh, hi there, Sheriff. Miss Blue, hey, hey, come on in. There's no refund. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I'd offer you a seat, but uh, we're all full up. <laughs> Maybe Mr. Tucker wouldn't mind standing. No, no, I like it right where I am. Well, here, sir, sit here. No, thank you. I won't be staying long. Manny, I got something to say to you. No dialogue. The script says no dialogue. Why don't you <laughs> shut up and listen? Oh, easy now, Sheriff. That badge don't give you the right to push people around. Well, I'll take it off. You should be used to that. Okay, law man. Hey, oh. no, wait, no, hold it. Hold it. Damn it. Oh, anybody listen to me? Oh, My lamp. She broke my lamp. She wanted to tell you she's quitting. So? Tucker, I can't make you leave. You haven't broken any laws, so I can't jail you. You just finish up your important business with Smiley here and go on back to where you came from. Because I'll tell you one thing. My job is to protect everyone here in Middle Point, no matter who they are. And you're making my job awful hard. What he can't, he can't. And no man makes exceptions for you. You learn to stay on your guard, looking out for your part. You learn boots nuts that are back of your chew. Like my daddy told, when you go out the cold, you're not down there to take in the view. You keep respect for the mind, concentrate all the time. Of course, boots nuts that are back of your chew. What makes Beach Nut such a traditional favorite? It's cause Beach Nut just keeps on getting better. It's a moisture, more satisfying chew. Next time you're buying chewing tobacco, try Beach Nut. You won't be disappointed. Then when your chip's done, you come back to the sun. You and the boys hoist a few. It ain't such a bad life. She ain't such a bad wife. And you got your Beach Nut tobacco to chew. Like she was sleeping. 
Only we can't wake her. I'll, I'll get the doctor. It's too late, Sheriff. Our little girl's cold. <laughs> She's dead. Smiley! Open up, it's Sheriff Peters! Oh, come in. Come in. Oh, what's the trouble, Al? It's six in the morning. I just got to bed. Get dressed. Be at town hall in half an hour. I'm calling a meeting. Oh, what? What's going Where's on? Where's Tucker? How should I know? Oh, where is he? He's in a hotel somewhere. Al, are you drunk? Yeah, I'll find him myself. Now, get going. All right. All right. Open up. It's the sheriff. Sansibar, open this door. Oh, what's the meaning of this? You, you got me out of bed. Tucker, not you again. I heard you were around. You, you boys acquainted? Are you kidding? We toured together for years. I wouldn't say toured. Debated is more like it. You can call it what you like, Sensor Bar. If it wasn't for me, you'd be out of business. If it wasn't for me, there'd be no one to stop you. Oh, come on. Don't make me laugh. I'm beginning to understand. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Now, now, I reckon just about everyone here knows me. If you don't, I'm Al Peters, Sheriff of Middle Point. I've lived here all my life, and I like it here. I ain't strayed far, but I know things are different in other parts. Well, lately, things have been different here, too. I'm sure all of you know that Smiley Grant over here has been showing new kinds of moving pictures in his theater. Now, some of you gone to see him, but some of you haven't. As long as Smiley's not letting in juveniles, people underage... He's not breaking any law. Folks either pay their money and watch or they don't. Then Mr. Sensiball here comes to Middle Point and says Smiley shouldn't be allowed to show those movies at all. Now, now Joe Baker, he shows movies too. And has for a long time. All kinds, but mostly westerns and war movies. I lost my brother Paul in the war. I loved that boy. Last time I saw him, he had a hole in him big enough to drive a truck through. I don't go to war pictures no more. But Joe Baker can show them. That's the way I see it. Oh, hey, it's that kind of talk that confuses people. I'm not confused, Mr. Sensabaugh. You can sit down now. And you can stop clapping, Mr. Tucker, because you ain't going to like what I got to say. There's been a murder in Middle Point. Now, hold it down, everyone. Hold it down. I've been out to the Whitehead place an hour ago. Bernadette Blue was killed last night. What? What? That's right, Mr. Tucker. Well, who killed her? Why aren't you out looking for the man who did it? Because the killers are here, in this room. Well, what are you looking at me for? Tucker, he did it. No, Tucker didn't kill no one. He's been in town all night. That's right. I got witnesses. You have witnesses. We're all witnesses to what happened. Sheriff, speak English. Be glad to. I had a talk with Ellen Whitehead yesterday. Seems like no one else cared about what she had to say. She told me how it was for her after she left Middle Point a few years back. She wanted to be an actress in Hollywood. A lot of girls have that dream, I guess. Well, Mr. Tucker here put Ellen Whitehead into the movies. He called her Bernadette Blue. You might say he took advantage of her. Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. She came to me. And you paid her a fair wage, right? She needed me, not the other way around. She needed you, you needed him, he needed us, but who needed Bernadette Blue? Well, so who killed her? This is the murder weapon. What is that? A bottle. A bottle of sleeping pills. Empty. Well, she didn't get them from me. They were hers. Then you're saying that, that she killed herself? It wasn't Tucker? I'm saying that it was Tucker. And you, and me, and everyone here. And still nobody seems to give a damn. Well, I'm through with my speech. If anyone's interested, the funeral's tomorrow. Mr. and Mrs. Whitehead might appreciate some of their neighbors coming. You all can decide that for yourselves. <laughs> I, I need a camera. You? Yes, I need, I need a camera, and I, uh -huh. I'm going to, to right place? I know. Um, <laughs> I'm going to Afghanistan to hunt rocks, and rocks. I need a small uh, camera that fits in the pocket so that takes mm -hmm. big, clear pictures. 
good. I, I have exactly what you're looking for. Oh, yeah? I have six different models of the Kodak Pocket Instamatic camera. That's wonderful. Uh -huh. I'm going to take the Native Railway native for two weeks railway. and then get off and walk for six walk? months over Sharp Rock, so I don't sharp want anything rock. big and right. uh, bulky, but I... Uh -huh. Look, uh, I have uh -huh. a Kodak Pocket Instamatic 20. It weighs about four ounces. That sounds good. Uh -huh. What kind of rocks are you hunting? Diamonds. Oh, so am I. The Kodak Pocket Instamatic camera. Big, sharp, clear pictures from the camera that slips into your pocket. Six different models starting at less than $23. The Kodak Pocket Instamatic camera. One must be prepared to endure incredible hardships. Yeah. And, and success is not inevitable. I've returned home many times empty-handed. <laughs> so have I. <laughs> I'm Rod Serling. Close your eyes. Exercise your imagination. And join us again on our next presentation of... The Zero Hour. Mind of the Beholder is an original radio drama by Kim Weiskopf. Lyle Wagoner was heard as Al Peters. Featured in the cast were Jane Webb, Jack Crucian, Frank Nelson, and Alan Bergman. Zero Hour, created by J.M. Colas, directed by Don Hills, is produced in Hollywood for the Mutual Broadcasting System by Radio Productions Incorporated. Music is composed and conducted by Stanley D. Hoffman, Rochelle Sherman, associate producer. This has been a presentation of the Mutual Broadcasting System.